I greet you all saints in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, I would like to recognize those who have come. Thank you for coming. Um, I would also like to recognize the online audience. Thank you for tuning in. We are going through lesson 12 of our Sabbath school guide, Dying Like a Seed. John 12, verse 24, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. So Jesus here uses an allegory of a seed falling to the ground. And um, as a professional in agricultural sciences, um, the seed is at the center of, of what we do. And I understand when Jesus talks about seed, exactly what he's uh, talking about. We've all had an opportunity to, um, to handle seeds. We know what they look like. Some are big, some are shiny, all are attractive. Um, and so what is Jesus really saying when he gives this allegory? And we'll find out as we go through the whole lesson. So we'll, we'll go through uh, these four stages, uh, the falling to the ground, the dying of the seed, and bearing fruit. And we'll also look at hindrances to growth, which will um, address self-sufficiency and substitution. So when Jesus talks about um, the seed that falls to the ground, um, my knowledge of, um, of, of, of seed science and seed technology tells me that um, when a seed falls to the ground, the mother has already um, given everything that is necessary for the seed to thrive. The, f the resources, the food resources that it will need um, before it germinates and starts uh, getting energy from the sun, um, it will also get all the resources that it will need to grow itself out. When the seed falls to the ground, Jesus is really saying something um, is in terms of processes. As it falls to the ground as well, we know that the seed um, does not just germinate there. Sometimes the conditions are not uh, ideal, so it remains there waiting. And it falls down into oblivion because we don't know what is going to hap happen to it. It may be susceptible to being fed on by other insects. It may be picked or washed away by the, by the waters. Um, anything uh, can happen to the seed. But then we know that when the conditions align, the seed germinates. And um, when we look at it physiologically, um, I mean, those seeds are adorable. But when they start breaking off and um, losing their beautiful coats, we, 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 we see here a transformation. So that in itself, we, we, in this lesson, we allude to as dying off because that nice quote that we were observing begins to change. Something is happening to the seed. And so something that grows out from that seed grows for a long time and produces many other seeds. So what does um, it say to us as Christians and what lessons do we get from uh, Jesus' statements. So, the falling to the ground. The falling to the ground. Let us open Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. Jesus says, Let this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, that was in Christ Jesus. So, it's we are being called to adopt a mindset, a mindset whereby Jesus, who was God, did not see it necessary to remain in his authority, to remain in his power, but to lose all that so that he could come down and save men. He, when he came down, he, he put on a cloth, a skin um, of a man or a creature that he had created. And not only that, he became a servant to the human beings that he had created. So the model that Jesus demonstrated here is the one of humility, to humble yourself. When you humble yourself, you um, 
you win people. When you humble yourself, your message is easier to appreciate and accept. When you humble yourself, the audience is bigger. Humbling yourself does not reduce you. Humbling yourself does not make you weak, but humbling yourself makes you um, a, a, a force or it sets you up for success, just like we see in Jesus' model. So the falling off of the seed from its mother to the ground, from the pleasures where it was receiving everything that it needed from the mother to the ground, which is oblivion, in which we do not know um, what is going to happen to it, is that humility that Jesus is trying to refer to. How many um, things are you willing to renounce that holds you back from succeeding? How many things um, can you set apart or some rights that you can do away with just for you to be able to save a dying soul. So it's a very uh, powerful message to us and a challenge to us to be humble just like Jesus did. And we know the result of his humility. Now, dying to self. Dying to self. Um, dying to self, we see it when the seed falls to the ground and now the conditions necessary for it to grow have aligned. It takes up water. When it takes up water, something uh, begins to happen within the seed. The seed coat that covers it, the form in which we, we fancy it, in which, which, I, which we use to identify a seed, it begins to change. So that transformation is um, the death of a seed as we find it um, in, in, in Jesus' example. So when um, the, the seed is broken off, right, we see that roots come out, shoots come out, a new lease of life comes out. Now, with that in mind, let us go to Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And Romans chapter 12, verse 1 reads, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God. This is your reasonable service. So as we learn from the Old Testament, a sacrifice meant the death of an animal. And in this situation, we're talking about death of sinful inclinations. We can only be effective, we can only be impactful in our Christian life when we die, when we die to our sinful uh, inclinations. And so um, presenting ourselves a living sacrifice is making sure that we look at our weak points and making sure that we do away with them. Before we can have an experience with God, before we understand with God, it is necessary to die uh, to self. There's a quote here from Christ Object Lessons, page 86, and it reads, All who would bring forth fruit as workers together with Christ must first fall into the ground and die. The life must be cast down into the furrow of the world's need. Self-love, self-interest must perish, but the law of self-sacrifice is the law of self-preservation. The seed buried in the ground produces fruit, and in turn, this is planted. Thus, the harvest is multiplied. The husbandman preserves his grain by casting it away. So in human life, to give is to live. The life that will be preserved is the life that is freely given in service to God and men. Those who, for the sake of Christ, sacrifice their life in this world, will keep it unto eternal life. Every sacrifice has a cost. It is a crucible. Sacrifice is not easy. Sacrifice is painful. Just like a seed, as it sheds its coat, just like a seed, as it changes its form, when we look at it, we begin, um, we're not happy. What is happening to this seed? But a, a very new uh, life is coming out, a new way of doing things, which is more effective, which is more impactful, is coming up, and we should um, follow this model for us to succeed. Bringing fruit, bringing forth fruit. So now we have seen our seed has germinated and a new plant is emerging, and that new plant is growing. So now we know who God is. We know we have sacrificed our natural inclinations. We have addressed all these key areas that were a stumbling block. We, we have humbled ourselves. Now it is time to grow. Now, bearing fruit 
um, means listening and obeying. Now, let us turn our Bibles to the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3. From chapter 2, actually, to uh, some sections of chapter 3, we see three characters that are Eli's sons, Eli himself, and Samuel. Eli's sons, um, in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22 to 25, we see that they do what they want in God's temple. They receive warning after warning, but they don't listen to God. They do un ahead of unspoken of things um, in God's temple, and so um, it resulted in their destruction. And then the next one is Eli himself. Eli was a good person in general, a, a, a priest of God, a worker in God's temple, very loving of the truth. But we see Eli not being able to pacify his sons, not being able to reach out to, the, to his sons and control his sons and save his sons from, um, from doing detestable things um, in God's temple. And so um, we see also a penalty for not listening and obeying God. And um, the third example is Samuel. Samuel, a very young person, listens to God and obeys his will to the dot. And we see God blessing Samuel even from this story and even in the future, um, in, in, in later chapters, we see Samuel following God and listening to his instructions and following them. So um, when we are transformed um, into this new life, when we listen to Christ, our blueprint is progress. Our blueprint is progression from, um, from when we know Christ up to the time that Christ um, delivers all his uh, plans and his ideas for us. Um, this is a challenge to some leaders in the church. They know, some as they, they know the truth and they follow some aspects, but some of, the, of their weaknesses they don't address. And we see it in the uh, example of Eli. Eli was a good prophet who loved God, who served God, but there were some weaknesses that he did not address. He did not die um, within uh, those areas. And these are the areas that led, led to his downfall. So it's a challenge to everyone to always be looking at the areas that we are not doing well so that we die, especially the things that we cherish, the things that um, give us our, our identity, the things that we, um, we use for people to respect us. Let us be aware of those things. Are they in line with the will of God? Let us be like Samuel who listened to God's word and followed God's word um, to the dot. The Holy Spirit expects a response when he talks to us. We must not silence his voice. He's sharing God's will for us. Our response must always be to obedience. So the Holy Spirit working with the Godhead is always giving us instructions, is always giving us re reproach. But when, we see, when, when he sees that we are paying uh, attention to things, um, to, to our own advices and to our own uh, inclinations and to our own reasoning, we see, um, we see that there will be a fall and a falling away. And the advice that we get from the Holy Spirit, um, we do not receive as much as um, we, we were supposed to receive. Now, we'll look at um, a few hindrances um, of growth. And these two hindrances, we'll summarize them um, as self-sufficiency and substitution. Sometimes when we are faced with um, challenges and, crucible, in, and crucibles, we tend to lean to our own understanding. We tend to find our own solutions. Sometimes we even avoid um, God and tend to human beings. Sometimes we tend to the internet. Sometimes we tend to worldly professors instead of turning to God. And self-sufficiency, as we find it exemplified in the story in the Old Testament. Samuel chapter 13, verse 1 to 14. Um, King Saul, after he is sworn in power, is given specific instruction by the prophet Samuel, instructions that came from God. Um, and so he attacks the Philippine, uh, Philistine's army. When he attacks the Philistine's army, um, the, 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 the war gets hot 
to an extent that uh, they begin to lose the war. But the instructions by Samuel, we find them in um, 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 8, and also 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 10, where Samuel specifically gives instructions on what Saul, uh, Saul ought to do. But Saul, because he observed his army panicking, because he observed that the, the war was getting hot, he forgot the advices that he received from God and he turned to his reasoning. Self-sufficiency then indicates the challenge um, of relying on ourselves. Because when you rely on ourselves, we disregard what God wants and we lose whatever endeavor we embark on. So it is a lesson to us as Christians to turn to God and follow what he says, just like Samuel did. And um, we also find substituting. Um, and uh, when we turn to the book of Zachariah, chapter 4, verse 6, um, the prophet Zachariah is advised to Zerubbabel, who is the one building the temple of the Lord, rebuilding the temple of the Lord when the children of Israel had come from capti captivity, they were sub supposed to rebuild the temple of the Lord. But it wasn't easy for a Zerubbabel because he, felt, he experienced a lot of resistance from the children of Israel. For further um, study on this area, let us go, um, let us read Ezra chapter 4 and 5. This is where we will find the whole story. But um, what we want to learn from this situation are the words of God to Zerubbabel to encourage him um, in the midst of the resistance that he was experiencing. So Zechariah chapter 4 verse 6 reads, The angel told me to give Zerubbabel this message from the Lord. You will succeed not by military might or by your own strength, but by my spirit. So it is the Lord's spirit that would spare Zerubbabel to achieve everything that he ought to, to achieve. And in this situation, to rebuild God's temple in the, middle, in the midst of a revolt and a resistance by God's children. I don't know what uh, challenges you face, but I would like to advise you that when you are facing a challenge, when you are facing a crucible, be it addressing um, a sin that so easily besets you, um, be it a, a, a natural inclination, um, be it pride, um, you ought to tune in to God and follow his instruction and he will aid you to go through whatever challenge you face. And that is the lesson that God was trying, uh, that Jesus was trying to teach when he gave an example of a seed which has first to die and give up all um, its beauty and give up all its uh, protection so that it brings forth much seed. So let us learn um, from what Jesus is trying to say to us. Each and every day as we begin our day, let us wake up to die off ourselves and take up Christ. When we take up Christ, it is easy to navigate life because we are under the creator, the guidance of the creator who knows what we ought to do. Let us die and humble ourselves and let us not rely upon ourselves and let us not also rely upon other people or other things for us to succeed in this, code, in this thing called life. Thank you very much uh, for listening. Uh, may God bless you. We will close with a prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you this afternoon for an opportunity to study your word. Thank you very much for the opportunity um, to listen and to hearken to your words. Be with us now as we live our lives to remember, to sacrifice all those weaknesses and inclinations that are holding us back from being effective in your work. Give us that self-sacrificing spirit to do away with all things that hinder us and hold us back and to look up to you and to find you and to listen to everything that 
uh, you wish to say and teach us. Heavenly Father, I pray for each family member who is tuned in and each family member that is in this auditorium, that you may be with them as we go out to apply these powerful teachings that we have received, these powerful teachings that we we'll experience throughout the week. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen.